Hi everyone! So this week we are doing vocabulary words and idioms from the series Jessica Jones. Uh, so I decided to go a little Jessica Jones style. But my attitude is not at all Jessica Jones. <laughs> There's no way I could do a whole lesson being surly and sarcastic and not caring about anything. Um, so I will carry on as myself. All right, our first expression from Jessica Jones, uh, season one, episode one, is to keep tabs on someone. So if you're keeping tabs on someone, you are watching them or monitoring them very carefully. Uh, you could also keep tabs on something or some situation. Um, so a lot of people like to keep tabs on their credit card. You know, they make sure that they're not spending too much and they look at where their money's going. I should probably do this. Um, another example could be um, maybe a neighbor tells me, I noticed a strange car parked in front of your house last night. Did you have a guest? Then I might reply, are you keeping tabs on me? You know, like, are you watching every little thing that I do? All right, our next expression is, I figured. So, I figured just means I thought so. And I thought so means I thought this would be true because I already knew something about the situation or something about the people involved. Um, so maybe if I was asked to pick up coffee for a meeting at work, um, and I know that my coworkers are always drinking Starbucks coffee, um, then I assume that that's going to be the best choice for the kind of coffee to bring to the meeting. So when I arrive at the meeting, I might say, I figured you guys would prefer Starbucks, so I picked something up from there. You know, like, I already knew about that. I knew that about you, so I figured this was the best choice. Um, or maybe... Back to our Canadian examples. So if it's been snowing all morning um, and a friend of mine arrives late to work and she says, oh, sorry I'm late, uh, the traffic was crazy, the roads are a mess because of the snow, I would probably say, yeah, I figured. You know, like, I figured you would be late because the roads are always a mess when it snows, especially in Vancouver because we don't know how to deal with snow. Um, or I figured, as in, I figured the traffic would be terrible. All right, our next expression, uh, which is related but not exactly the same, is it figures. Um, so if you do watch Jessica Jones, it figures is a very Jessica Jones type of thing to say. Um, so this is when you feel like I'm not surprised that the worst possible thing happened. <laughs> so I'm kind of pessimistic or I'm feeling sarcastic and dark and the worst coincidence or the worst outcome happens and I'm saying, yeah, I thought that would happen. Of course, the worst thing would happen. So maybe if it's been sunny for a whole week, beautiful weather, and then on the day of my wedding, the sky opens up and it just pours rain. I might say, it figures, you know, it figures that it would be raining on my wedding day. Um, so being really kind of pessimistic and dark with my attitude about that. So yeah, a note about I figured, you could also use I figured in the same way. Um, you could use it negatively like, well, I figured it would rain on my wedding. I figured my boss wouldn't be happy with my report again. Um, but it doesn't always have to be negative. Whereas the expression, it figures, is always used in that context where I thought the worst possible thing that could happen would happen. You know, I expected this terrible result. All right, our next expression is to be conned. Ah, so to be conned, all right, we're going to have to go back to the, the original form of the verb, which is just to con. Um, so to con a person is to trick them or deceive them 
um, in order to get something that you want from them. And it usually involves some elaborate or complex lie that you tell them. Um, so the expression to be conned, which is the way that it's used in this episode of Jessica Jones, um, it's just putting it into passive voice. So I was conned by that person, or I heard he got conned, right? So we're just using the passive voice construction. Um, so an example of being conned or a con or to con someone uh, would be if somebody phones you and they say, hi, I'm calling from your bank and we see there's been some suspicious activity on your account. Um, so we need to get some information from you to verify that we're speaking with the correct person before we can manage this situation with your account. So the person phoning you asks for some personal information, um, some personal details. Maybe they want to confirm your bank account number. Um, and hopefully you become suspicious that maybe they are trying to con you. You know, you don't want to be conned. Uh, so this would be a typical kind of a con. All right, our next expression, to go overboard. Um, so if you go overboard, you are so eager or so excited about something uh, that you do way too much, way more than you need to do. Uh, so maybe it's your birthday and I invite everyone in the university residence <laughs> and I reserve a whole nightclub for the night and I spend $400 on a cake. Uh, so you might say, wow, you went a little overboard for my birthday. Or, or I might admit to it, uh, I think I might have gone a little overboard. You know, I was so excited that I did way more than I needed to, way too much. Um, these YouTube videos. <laughs> so I could probably just choose four or five words from an episode and not try to dress up like Jessica Jones. But I get so excited about it that I choose 10 words and <laughs> try to dress up like Jessica Jones. So I go a little bit overboard, especially tonight. Um, so as you can probably tell, there's a bit of a negative connotation to going overboard because it's too much. Um, but it's also in a situation where it's because you're excited or because you're really eager about something. So the two things kind of meet each other, you know, like it was maybe a bad thing I did so much, but I was really excited. All right, our next expression. Oh, our next one is just an adjective. Um, so this adjective is frugal. And frugal is just a positive way of saying cheap. So someone who does not like to spend a lot of money. If you're a frugal person, then you are very good at spending very little money. Um, so maybe if you go out in New York City, and you're able to find a good lunch for four dollars. Like you would be really frugal, you know, like how could you manage to do that? Um, or grandmothers. I think of grandmothers as usually being very frugal. Maybe this is just my stereotype, but I feel like a grandmother can go to a market and find the best quality fruit and the best quality vegetables for the cheapest prices. You know, like she's a very frugal lady. So that would be a compliment to call someone frugal. All right, our next expression is to watch someone like a hawk. Um, so a hawk is a bird, a bird of prey, kind of in the same family as an eagle. So similar to an eagle. Um, and of course, hawks have exceptional eyesight. So that's where the idiom comes from. If you're watching someone like a hawk, you are watching them very carefully um, and usually following their actions, following their movements. Um, so it, it could be neutral or it could be negative. You know, if that creepy guy at the bar has been watching you like a hawk all night, that's not good. It's, it's creepy. Um, but you could say something like uh, a mother watches her baby like a hawk. You know, like maybe it's a new mother and she's nervous and she wants to make sure that her baby is safe and, and okay all the time and she's watching him very carefully to make sure he's okay. 
Um, but there's definitely a feeling of intensity to watching someone like a hawk. Our next one, it's just a single word and it's an informal slang word, booze. So I feel like most of you have probably heard the word booze. Booze is just an informal slang term for alcohol. So you could say there's probably going to be a lot of booze at the Christmas party. You know, like there's going to be a lot of alcohol there. Or I think you should cut down on the booze. You've been drinking all night. And then we also have the famous acronym BYOB. So if you get a text that says there's a party tonight at Mark's house, 1030 BYOB. BYOB stands for bring your own booze. Um, or some people interpret it as bring your own beer or bring your own bottle. Um, but yes, that's what it means if you get a BYOB invitation. Um, and sometimes if it's not specified on a party invitation, you could ask, is it BYOB? Should I bring my own booze? All right, our next one is another slang, informal, very common expression. Uh, but I wanted to bring it up because you could use it with or without the particle off. So it is to be pissed off at someone. Um, you could also say to be pissed at someone. Um, so again, very informal. Um, I would not use this expression with my mother. My mother's a little bit old school. Maybe some mothers you could, but my mother doesn't like impolite language. <laughs> so yes, that's kind of the level of informality of being pissed off. Definitely safe to say around your friends. Um, so maybe your roommate borrowed your bicycle and he didn't ask you first. Um, and you might say, I'm so pissed off at Mark. I can't believe he didn't ask before he borrowed my bike. Or just, I'm pissed at Mark. Or just, I'm pissed, I'm so pissed. Although note, the expression, I'm pissed, could also mean, I am drunk. So context is everything. Although personally, I would usually use pissed off. I just like it better, but they're both are equally as common. All right, so pissed, pissed off, pissed off at, pissed at, angry or mad at someone. And our final expression is to pan out. Okay, so how a situation pans out means, um, is the result a success or not? Or to what degree is it a success or not? And the situation you're talking about is usually a plan or some type of business deal. Um, so of course, because of context, this is usually used in formal situations. Um, so you might say, well, what we do next depends on how this meeting pans out. You know, like whether what we want is achieved at the end of the meeting. Um, or if your career as an actor doesn't pan out, at least you have your degree. You can get a real job. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's a lot of good stuff from that episode. Um, I'm really impressed with this series. It's entertaining, it's dark, it's gritty, um, and it has so much good, useful, difficult vocabulary and higher level vocabulary. Um, probably because it's a film noir style and it has kind of a literary element to the dialogue. So it, it feels like you're reading a book somewhat when you're watching this. Um, yeah, so let me know if you like Jessica Jones and even if you don't like it, I'm still going to do more episodes because I like it. Uh, but I will also be returning to some Breaking Bad episodes and I cannot wait for the new Star Wars movie to come out. I will be all over that. All right, so for everyone in the assembly hall conversation class, I will see you guys on Thursday. Um, please look over these words again. And just after the video, I will post the discussion questions that we'll be talking about recycling this vocabulary. Okay, see you guys on Thursday.